Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're listening to Lotro Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network. Brought to you by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapons with Doghouse Systems. Audible, find your next great read at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And GoDaddy, put your website to work while you play. Welcome to Lotro Reporter, episode 264. I am joined this week by Steve because... Chris is still dying of some pooping cough or something Canadian disease that, that he has. And um, Leonor, I don't know. I, I, I still think he's looking for his pants. So Steve probably won't say much because I took his microphone away from him. <laughs> lies, lies, <laughs> lies. I am not Steve. You're not Steve. I have no pants. <laughs> well, we know you don't have any pants. But do you like chocobos? That's the important question. Um, I guess it depends what era. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about Final Fantasy Tactics, Chocobos, them things are wild and they just come out and peck the head off of your characters. I don't like them. Okay. I, I like um the uh, Final Fantasy era, um, Final Fantasy VII era, where you get to train them and uh, raise them and you get the Black Chocobo, I think it was. Yeah, Maybe it was a gold one. It was a gold one that lets you go all the way across the water and go get Knights of the Round. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I... And the other Chocobos, other than that, are like, kind of sucked. I like my Final Fantasy X Chocobos. Those are kind of cool. Big and poofy. Yeah. And you had to race them, which was really annoying. But not nearly, <laughs> not nearly as bad as chasing those stupid butterflies. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, Yeah. Anyway, welcome to Final Fantasy Reporter. <laughs> of I guess I'm back, huh? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm your host, Carrie, and that voice you hear you haven't heard for four whole weeks, that's Leonor. He's back Ooh. from I lying on the in the sun in the Mediterranean or something, right? Yeah, yeah, dead in a ditch. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, Carrie, so... You've got to let me know what the heck has been going on with Lotro lately. So if you could just kind of fill me in really quick, that would be great. Because uh, I really don't have anything to say about what I did during this week. Um, let's see. I talked to Chris into streaming last two weeks ago, his Bjorning to make it to level 20, and we managed to kill him live on the show. That was kind of fun. That's not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. What else is happening? The producer's letter came out. There was actual mention of an actual PVMP map in yes. the producer's letter. Yes, I got lots of messages about that. Um, I think they were talking about making a smaller map. Uh-huh. Um, yes. And kind of a layer of... Um, oh, now you're going to make me look back at the notes to get the name, proper name, so I don't butcher it. <laughs> uh, so why were... Mama set in the chat room? He yes, is yes. in the chat room, so... Yeah. I'm still going to butcher it, but I'm going to get at least closer this time. That was 262, I believe. Um, let me double check here. Nope, that was 263. Maybe we only did have one week. No, it was. We did have two weeks. We talked about how, of course, they were going to, to um, put the producers out the letter the next day after we recorded. And, of course, they did. Um, let's see. Oskiliath. Oskiliath. Yes, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Better. Um, yes, so it would be seriously talking about a PVMP map in Oskiliath. Um, the imbued um, level 100s are coming in the next update. So they better yeah, be. Yeah, they are. Oh, and there will be no level cap raise in 2015. No level cap in 2015. That's what the letter said. Wow. That's what, that's what I saw somewhere. It was in my notes that there would be no level cap raise in 2015. Wow. Very surprised. Yeah. I kind of don't I need too. my my weapon um, imbued. imbued now. 
<laughs> I swear I read it. So yeah, level cap increases not in the card for this year. That's what was in the oh. um, clarification to some questions from Vivian. What the hell? Yeah, I knew <laughs> you would be very disappointed in that. Well, it, it's nice that we're going to be keeping the same stuff that we have for a while. Um, I'm sure that they will come out with more gear things when the, I think they said that more group content was coming out. Yes, they did. They didn't say anything about it being like a full raid anything. Actually, she mm-hmm. flat out came out and said it's not going to be a full raid cluster. But they mm-hmm. did say that they were going to be doing some group stuff. Some group stuff, and I think there was like an instance mentioned or something. Not yes. not by name, but like just instances in general. Um, they they said we will we are referring to a cluster of instance content for three and six mans that is neither a big battle or a raid. Okay. Yes, and then, that's fine. Uh, uh, smaller smaller group things like that are just fine by me. Yeah. Especially, I, I really wish that they would take a lot of the the older epic. Not epic battle, but epic story stuff. There's a uh, a dragon fight called Fire and Ice. Do you remember that? It was with uh, the undead dragon. It was a black dragon. Where is that at? Yeah, that's book one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did book one. Well, you had to have fought the dragon then. Okay. Unless it was only group content. I did not do group one. Book one in a group. You, you had to run to a doorway, and the dragon... Oh, no, the dragon comes out at the end. That's right. You're fighting a undead guy. Oh, the Nazgul fight. undead guy, yes. Yeah, I think I've done the Nazgul fight. Yeah, because it was bugged. And you got to stand by stones, and specific stones will keep you alive, and the other ones will hurt you. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, uh, the dragon wakes up, the undead dragon... Uh, wakes up and flies away because whatever you did freed it. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. And then you oh. go fight it in Elkrod. Yeah, I remember that. It's at the very end with um, um, really cool dress woman. Elkrod and the Misty. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of cool. Hey, look, a war goat. Oh, yeah, and... um. I went and saw the Hobbit over Christmas. There were war goats and a war pig. There was a war pig, Leonor, a war pig. They brought their own bacon to battle. I got to see the war pig. And the cool war pig. That thing was awesome. Way better than the I war wish goats. they would have said its name. Because <laughs> you know it's named. <laughs> bacon! <laughs> I would not mind an action figure of that thing. <laughs> Was- yep, I got to see the movie. Um, it, there, there, a lot of people were saying that it was just like full of action and stuff like that, and it was. Uh, especially you, you seen it too. I yeah. think you might have mentioned something about that. But you know what? It was the end of the the trilogy, and I was fine with that. It was, it and was, it, it didn't feel like it was just like all shoved together either. I mean, it it actually did feel like they spent some time doing a little bit more plot here and there instead of what some of the other people were seeing where it was all just squished together. Yeah, so it, I, I thought it, I thought it felt pretty good. It ran it ran really fast to me. I mean, I know it was a long movie. It ran mm-hmm. really really fast and and you know, and I did It you... certainly did not feel like a long movie. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was long, but I would look I would look at my watch and be like, "Wow, we're, this is wow." Cuz they were getting a, through a lot of stuff really quickly, but it did not feel like it was um Squished. It just felt like mm-hmm. they were moving quickly through the story. Right. Um, yeah, and I was so excited to see Angmar. I'm like, smack and see. Did, were you excited to see Angmar? <laughs> I was, and I didn't get to see much of it. No, just the. <laughs> I'm looking at the go. I'm I'm pretty sure I, I I've been there. They they didn't have the killing row of stones. I mean, how could I they got miss to see the... some wobbly wobbly rocks, and that was about it. <laughs> yeah, the, the the tower of the evilness, but that was about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "That's it, man." Yeah. Oh anyway, well. It was fun. Special edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they'll fall, fall, and go through there for ten minutes and come back up. Yeah. Who Let's... knows? Who knows? I mean, <laughs> I hear there's like entire people that didn't make it to the theater cut that are in the special editions. <laughs> you know, entire. Yeah, like like um. Oh, what's his face? His dad. Yeah, that was in the, the in Dol Um Yeah, 
it's, it's in the second movie. He's in this totally in the second movie, and you didn't even see him. You just heard him mentioned. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the extended editions to come out in a pack, and then they yeah. be mine. Yep, I think a lot of people are. Yeah, and then if I get the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings, we've got about fifteen or twenty hours of epicness. <laughs> Or you could just start a character. <laughs> That's and true. Play for yourself. So what was the last thing that you did in Lotro? Um, the last thing I did in Lotro is I made a Bjorning named Barry Mac, except B E R I M A C Q was take, taken on Brandywine. So if you see that character, tell them to give me my name, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Brandywine's got that weird thing where, where... everybody's on it. <laughs> You check the name in in the character creation, and it'll say that it's taken. But when you come into the game and you try and message somebody, you know, with that name, it'll say that that name doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Braxwolf was on Twitter, and I'm like, dude, come on, you got to get on Brandywine. He's like, nope, somebody's taken my name. So I made a character, and like, sure enough, it, it showed up that it was taken. But as soon as I got into the game, it said that. The game was, you know, the name was available. That the character did not exist. That's I was odd. like, well, there it is. You can get on it. He's like, no. <laughs> well, I'll try again. But right now it's Barry, B-E-R-R-Y-M-A-C. Because that's as close as I could get. Barry Mac. You could, you can, you could uh, name her. It, it's a boy or a girl? It's a girl. It's a girl. You could, you could name her Barry Macaro. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did in game, pretty much. I've been on a reading kick, so I've been playing many games. I've gone through ten books in the last two weeks, but it's about holy it. cow! Yeah, I read fast. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> I read fast. All right. Um. I am very excited. Chris has been so excited about Patreon. You know, I, I don't know if you were in the chat room when he told. I'm, oh, I'm sure you've heard it on MMO Reporter about this super special um, song that he and Harry are going to be releasing shortly. Yes, I got to hear about four seconds of it. Oh, you should go back to episode 262. He played a, quite a few bit, large clip, couple of large clips on our show. Dang it. Yeah. All right. I thought I was getting the scoop. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's a neat little song. We're still trying to figure out how to make the um, dumb ways to die work in MMOs. Ah, uh, uh, that uh, anyway. Yeah, I found out that that's a uh, a Android game, so you yeah. should look for that. Really, because it started out as the um, it was an Australian Safety Council. It's a app right. For the then it came to a, right. Then they they put game. this really cute animated cartoon to it later on. Yeah. And then all those little characters are in the Android game now. Oh, wow. there are. And there's two ver- there's two different versions of it. There's like a winter one and a summer one or something like that. And it's free. Oh, cool. <laughs> I will have to go. There's a Dumb Ways to Die 2. That is awesome. I don't know if you ever played any of the Nintendo games called WarioWare, where it's just a whole bunch of mini games like Shake the Controller or, you know, Flip the Controller and... and it's just really quick mini games that take like three seconds to do. Okay. That's what these games are. It's it just gives you a bunch of a whole bunch of mini games to do with all these characters and if you screw up then they all die. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> I see. You gotta do this, gotta do that. Well anyway, um that's one of the songs they're working on and we are up to eighteen eight patrons and eighty dollars a month. So twenty dollars away from our hundred dollar a month goal to get a song every other month. Oh nice. Yeah, or uh, no, yeah, and then we are going to be doing a patron-only podcast if we reach a two hundred fifty dollars a month. Mm-hmm. So you get to come and talk to us, and I think he's going to have actually like, a, like come join us, patrons, and talk to us on the, the um, and I close my thing. The um, come talk to us on Skype and chat with your favorite host, which I know will be not will probably be Harry and Celeste or something like that. But. What? Yeah. You're my favorite host because you're buying me a kilt. I am. Because <laughs> you have to. That's the only way I'm going to get your bottom legs covered. <laughs> mm. 
Send your kilt donations to MMOReporter.com. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, if we got enough, get it up Patreon. I will make sure Lanor gets a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the kilts are made. There is a shop in the, um, it's a utility kilt shop. There's a shop in um, the, the uh, Pioneer Square in Seattle. Well, I would proudly wear it. I bet you would. <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd probably go to Cafe Press and, and find out how big of a pin that I could get so I could just hang it right in the front that says MMO Reporter. <laughs> hey, and then when you do actually get to come to a PAX, then you'll, you know, you'll fit right in with all of the people I'll, I'll in utility. Right in. Actually, you'll have to say Lotro Reporter. It has to. It would have to. Has yeah. to. Has to. Speaking of Cafe Press, that reminds me, I had forgotten we had that. Do we have any Lotro Reporter stuff in there or just MMO Reporter stuff? Um, I'm going to be working on a new logo at some point, and then we're going to be having something in there. Okay, cool. I drank out of my I Will Allow It cup today. Ah. I drink out of my I Will Allow It cup every day. <laughs> I need to put that back on, on something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that would uh, suggest I should have my dog's grandma make you a kilt. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> she is a, so quite the sewer. She is. Um. All right. Then I want the inside of it to say, I will allow it. <laughs> allow it. <laughs> <laughs> we should get to the news. <laughs> we probably should get to the news. <laughs> have been having some um well that's one thing we didn't talk about what had been happening they pretty much confirmed that at some point in the foreseeable future this there will be server closings they did not say mergers they did mm -hmm. not they said they would be closing servers mm -hmm. um, but not that's for right I, I remember reading something about uh people have been asking about it for a while yeah or something like so she did confirm um, when, when they talked about move. So they're moving the EU servers back to the EU, mm -hmm. but Turbine's still going to run them. Um, and then um, they are moving the U.S. servers more to the middle of the country hmm. to hopefully help with ping and load time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so right now. All they're doing is transferring servers to different locations in the country. They are not doing any or in the world. They are not doing anything um, else. And if you st still would like to make a character on a European server from the U.S., you certainly can do that, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, they have started putting e. Um, they have started putting EU and U.S. tags in front of the server names, so you know what you're on. Mm-hmm. So you're you can be aware. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are not. Yeah, nobody's taking over anything. And then the the player base consolidation is um, they they still cannot move U.S. U.S. characters to EU servers and vice versa. They will mm -hmm. not be able to do that ever. From what I've they, what, what they've been told, it's just too technical to do. Mm -hmm. But they are planning on figuring out ways because it's, you know if if your server closes and all your mithril coins and all that stuff you bought it's not worth anything to you. So so all of that account bound stuff that you haven't been able to take with you when you transfer servers, that will be able to go with you. They're working on that. Okay. And Good. yep yep. So they just wanted to clarify some stuff, but it doesn't look like anything's happening anytime soon there's no timeline anything like that see it it looks like a bus or it looks like a wagon from the backside anyway moving on <laughs> um, <laughs> um we had some we've had like three iterations of patch notes on bolrar so let's see if i can't pick, pick out some cool stuff to talk about um let's see um, while in a bear form, the Bjorning has twice the melee range. Well, that's good. That's um, weird. Yeah. I'm trying to get past all the Bjorning stuff because they're, they're working on the Bjorning a lot. Um, <laughs> they're working on Pelligrir a lot. Yay, they finally killed me. Okay. 
the new roving threats will be in. Awesome. Yeah, so the powerful servants of the enemy can be found in Angmar, Forkel, Western Gondor, and Misty Mountains. So that's being planned for the next patch, then? If, yep, for patch 15. And that's on Bull Row right now. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And that's pretty cool. And unique rewards can be obtained by claiming the brands they bear. Hmm. And the existing roving threats of Central Gondor will also drop those brands. Um, so they've changed the... the uh, They've changed the check boxes, um, like for the full screen. They've changed that a little bit, so it's easier. I think it's a drop down instead of check boxes. Um, let's see. Oh, players who are sitting, lying down, or fainted will no longer stand up and, uh, upon entering an AFK state. Yay! <coughs> That's good. That is cool because I my elf always just like immediately stands up and then plops back down. Yeah, like in one frame of animation. My, my, <laughs> mine, mine, mine stops dancing, scratches her arm, and starts dancing again. Yep, yep. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> pets should no longer attempt to engage enemies that, that attacked you while you were mounted, but which are now long gone. <coughs> so that your wolf is no longer going to go after. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything. Looks like they're changing. Some, they're, they're they're fixing some stuff in Southern Bree and our chat and the Lone Lands mm-hmm. and Maria. Um, and some skirmish. Looks like they're just cleaning up a bunch of stuff. Is that uh, what what pretty much this whole Blue War patch is? It's just a <laughs> bunch of cleanup stuff? It looks like it. Um, let's see. And in 15.1, they're still working on the um, the roving threats. They're working on the, the music system, so the ABC files are. And they've turned on the, the anniversary festival. I saw a picture of one of the cloaks for the anniversary festival. I drooled. It was beautiful. <laughs> Oh, it was be- it was like different. It was so different. It mm-hmm. was like like furry and had like it's not square and it was really cool. It was really really cool. Let's see. Oh, and the roving threat rewards. The first age maces now look like maces instead of clubs, and the two headed swords look like swords instead of axes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of important. Cosmetic weapons. <laughs> yeah, just go Damn it. Roving threat. You can have an axe <laughs> instead of a sword. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, d- it's da- proof. D- David <laughs> said it's also, the brands are also in treasure chests. So that's, I mean, that's what I'm gathering is it's a lot of cleanup and they are working very hard to get the music system fixed, but it's, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know. They didn't say anything about, um, 15 being, I thought we were getting a new area, but I haven't seen any patch notes about that. Mm, yeah, I haven't heard anything about I thought we were getting, a, I think we were getting like, like a Skeliothers. Let's see. Um, character copy, Bjornings, the Claw, the Roar, the Hide, Pelagreer, Music, General, nothing about a new area. So, I don't know. That's what I thought we were getting. Oh, this is 15.2. This is not 16. This is a point patch. That's why. Okay. Yeah, this is a point patch. Okie dokie. Let's see what else we got. Um, Hey, Lanar, you like to stream Letra? Quite a bit. Do you know people who like to stream Letra? <laughs> Actually, apparently not enough. Yeah. Because we, we get messages about it. <laughs> ah, I see. Well... If you stream regularly and you're looking to grow your audience, um, then you might want to join the Lord of the Rings Online Community Stream Team. So members of the stream team will gain access to certain benefits designed to help grow their audiences, including free turbine points and items for giveaway, opportunity to have some of the game's devs join your stream, and promotional support. So if you, you know, stream regularly each week, send your Twitch username, community name, server, and normal times that you stream to stream at lotro.com for consideration, which we will be doing. 
We will be watching and reaching out to potential screamers to join our team. You say screamers. I said screamers. I meant streamers. <laughs> People who like to stream and scream, probably true. More dots. Yep, you know. and scream. Somebody died. I don't know who that could possibly could be. So. so somebody we know. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so if you if you like to stream, uh, stream Lotro regularly, um, and would like to have a chance to get some promotion and some turbo points and stuff to give away on your stream, be sure to email stream at lotro dot com. All right, Lanor, they're paying attention to the fact that you people on Brandywine keep screaming more lag, more lag. Yep. So Vivian two weeks ago asked for information on the lag. And I do believe it was quite a long post, <laughs> which I did not read <laughs> because I don't know the slag. And on 122, she says, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> it has given her valuable information and she has an investigating pot- potential cure for some of what you might be seeing. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, the, the lag can get pretty crazy. Uh, even if you're kind of far away from major towns, some of the lag can get really bad on Brandywine. It's uh, it's amazing, um, absolutely she- amazing. And PvP, PvP is never going to be fixed ever. No, because it's it's made um, not specifically for large groups to be always together fighting, but on Brandywine, that's exactly what happens. It happens every day, mm-hmm. and the the server uh, when when we have a bunch of people out there, it, it seems like it affects the server. <laughs> I bet I would not be surprised at all if it didn't. I, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I would be shocked. So she says that the and many of the answers did lead lead her to one potential culprit. She's going to take a look at it. Well, cool. And I just know you are so excited to know that they are working very hard to get the music system fixed in nah. patch fifteen point two. <laughs> well, one of the problems that that they have discovered, which I find very fascinating is that they believe the dropped notes issue has been fixed or significantly reduced in the version of that they will next put on Bull Roar. Mm-hmm. Um, they cannot test this in-house at, on all the different ways you could be putting it together as a band with the instruments and a variety of sizes. So if you do have a band and you would like to give input, please go to Bull Roar. And, and um, I'm sure Lily Kate's going to be putting together her large band there. <laughs> But they yeah, think- I'm, I'm sure that there isn't enough playtesters over there to <laughs> sit there and go through the ABC system and figure out how it all works and then write music and then... <laughs> yeah, exactly. We think part of this problem could be a limitation on the number of notes that can be played at one time. So the music system people are crashing the system. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can get an idea of the number of instruments and types you're using when you see this bug, it will help them better have a better chance of confirming that that's the problem. So large orchestras need not apply. Well, they should apply and try it and see if they get the bug and get, like shrink and see if they keep getting the bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all the famous minstrels from um, Landerville, please go over there. Yep, yep, yep. Try, try and... Bug the system as best as you can. Oh, I'm sure they're over there. I've seen many, many emails from <laughs> many, many emails from Keely on this. So it was very interesting. Now we have somebody who noticed something in game. They um, they took a picture and put it on Twitter of um. Donna Maria took Librarian of the Gates Great Smiles. Smiles. Whatever that is called. <laughs> um, Poppy Br- Brace Br- Br- Girdle. Anyway, but if you look on the map, Donna Maria, Donna Mira doesn't show up on the map. So, like, what's going on? And Maid of Lions has confirmed she's going to have something to do with something, but they won't tell us. She oh. kind of snuck in early again. It's probably one of those showed up with the roving monsters and nobody noticed her. So they yeah. Go to pull her back out. <laughs> well, there are a couple of things that are in the game that we would like to see 
uh, open up or have something to do with them, but nothing has happened yet. Like the dwarves that are in Bree that are guarding a, a, a gate and a yeah. door. Well, Remember can, that? Yeah, and you can kind of see the, 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 the wagon behind the gate, but mm-hmm. you can't get back there. Yeah, there's a couple of places in the game where there's something like that where you know something's going to go on, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so Maid of Lyman's did confer that she is a new arrival and her quest is still in the oven. And you'll hear more from him when it's time. Okay. Uh, so, but anyway, I thought, I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> All right, we have our spring and winter events tentative schedule. Are you excited to hear this? I know you're so into crafting. And that's how you level your character. <laughs> I just know that's how you do it, Lanner. That is how you have reached your 47 level 100s. So January 23rd through 25th, you can have a 25% crafting XP boost. I just well, know you're excited about that. I guess I that. need to work on prospecting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And on February, excuse me, January 30 to February 1st, it's the Welcome Back 25% XP Welcome Back Weekend. Ooh, nice. Good time to level. Put your little um, shieldy thing on, and then you put your pocket item in, and then you use your scrolls, and you do this, and you will be a level 50 Bjorning in no time. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. That's what Chris should should really do. (laughs) Well, he's trying to do it organically. Organically? Uh, which means he's not using any buffs or pocket items or anything like that. What? Yeah, that's what he said. And he does quests. I said, are you following Leonor's leveling guide? He says, no, I'm doing it with quests. And then he ended <laughs> up at level 18 and a half outside of the Lone Lands in that 22 area and got his face smashed in. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. Habnanigans is back, so you could go um, get your chicken for your bear. It'd be awesome. Yeah, that's something I I got to do yet. Every time I go there, it's uh it's I want to say that if good players are there, it's fun. But every time I go there, it's just people that are looking for the items and just trying to grind out the reps so they just stand there. Okay. So, yeah, I kept chasing chickens. I didn't know if I was messing up somebody's rope grind, but it's like I want to hit chickens. Yeah, when I go there, I'm I'm playing, but I'm usually playing by myself. <laughs> yeah, that's not a. So good. it's it's like yay, chicken. Oh, I got a point. There's a chicken. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm all for um, standing there and getting reputation. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you but like to having just... something to do is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, February 13th through 19th, skirmish mark acquisition boost, and then loot box weekends the following weekend. Ah, loot box weekend. Ooh, and the end of March, March twenty through twenty second, the buried treasure's back. I gotta go try to get that goat. That goat is pretty cool. Yeah, I, it's I, one of my favorite goats. Yep. All right, and that's pretty much what we've got for the news. Yay! <laughs> Oh, we have letters. We have two letters and a comment. So this okay. comment on the website is from, from Bragg, from um, Light the Beacons. And he says, spoiler alert on the episode title. From your description, I was guessing Chris was in Minis Errol, um, where, where he went right instead of left. <laughs> yeah, I, that <laughs> might have helped. But so would have been questing in the Old Forest, Barrow Downs, Adso's Camp, or North... Then Brief Fields, where you're supposed to be at level 18 and a half. <laughs> well, you will get to know the beginner bills, beginner skills well this way. Next time, he should insist on a personal escort at all times from level 18 onwards. Historically yep. speaking, he does not level so quickly that he can afford excessive repeats. Cheers, Bragavilia. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, because he does not let yet have a level 100. Nope. I think uh, I think um, Bordazar's uh, level eighty-seven, I believe. We got a letter from Kevin. Just last episode, we said we needed a letter from Kevin. We hadn't heard in from Kevin in a while, and I was getting concerned. And then we got a letter from Kevin. 
Um, so this is um, 1.0 of 2015. Okay. I was going to say, I, I lost track of the number. Yeah, I, I actually looked it up. I, I have 11 letters saved. I don't know if I've saved all the letters, but I have 11 letters saved from since last year. <laughs> Um, I figured I'd stop by and said my first letter of the new year. Yay! Yay! He started to be yawning after hearing about how overpowered they are. He lounged around the starting zone. It's very pretty. But once he completed the intro, he decided to test his grit in Middle Earth. So after being ported to the gates of Bree, he immediately turned east and journeyed to Aregion to challenge himself in the pack of his, at the peak of his abilities. He died shortly after entering the Lone Lands. <laughs> <laughs> That Slow seems down. to be a theme here. <laughs> so as for his hunter, he's taken the further challenges in epic battles. He is getting a platinum competition in retaking Pelagir was n- oh excuse me, c- platinum completion in retaking Pelagir was not too difficult. So he had to invent more challenges for himself. Mm. He says the hardest being the Helmsdike Fellowship that he had a champion he and a champion completed as a full platinum run with just the two of them. As a fellowship. That's the two of them. All right. Yeah. Um, And he would like to know what we think about the group instances hinted at in the producer's letter. He's all for it, but he's more concerned with the loot system. He says there are lots of instances to choose from. Scale Moria already. I think we've discussed that. But even Mm -hmm. with the choices, there isn't much need to run anything since the loot is very poor. And he said he was going to watch Crawl the Fantasy Classic. So what do you think of the new instances? Hitting? Crawl. Crawl. Oh. Okay. Uh, or it could be crawl. Is it crawl? Crawl. He said it was crawl. K-R-U-L-L. Crawl. Yeah, that's what the really the cool star thing where you like whip it out and all the blades come out. And you throw it and you go, woo, and then it, it comes back to you. Star knife? Sweet. Like a star knife? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll have to look up for it on Netflix. 70s Conan knockoff, I take it? Oh, uh, it's kind of sci-fi-ish. Okay. Like Flash Gordon. Oh, okay. But not so crazy. Because it has a star <laughs> knife that goes, woo, and flies. <laughs> All right. What were we talking about? <laughs> we, were actually, we were talking about what we think of the, the, the group content hinted, hinted in the next update 16. I think it's cool. I think small uh, small group and fellowship is an, a great idea. Yeah, um, if it's anything like they did with the group area that the, the group areas that were outside, that would be kind of cool. Um, they don't have to make an instance. They don't have to make you know like a big huge raid cluster or anything like that. If they have more things like that, and uh, the games always kind of had things like that, they just really never focused on it. It was just something to do for every once in a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so this, this is kind of nice that they might be focusing a little bit on something like that. And, uh, it, it, especially with the, um, the, the level hundreds being in Agmar and other places too. Um, that might be the group content that they might be hinting to come to think of it. Well, they, no, they said three and six men instances in the producer's letter. Oh, okay. Yeah. They, yeah. Did, they did say they were looking at some three and six man instances, which would be kind of cool. I, I do agree with him, though, that the instances that are out right now really doesn't really have that much stuff for, you know, items and stuff in them. I, I wish that they would update them. It, it would be kind of nice if they, <clears throat> excuse me, if they use the currency that they use right now to get the the um, gold armor and gold rings and uh, things like that. If they started putting that currency into some of these older instances, those instances would be run a lot. Okay, yeah. So I I would really like to see some of that, but I think that they're really trying to push and uh, get still get money out of those epic battles that they made. So I think that they're going to be focusing on those for at least a little while longer, and then we might see something all the way across the board with the instances. Cool. Now, <clears throat> you are getting to read the letter from a mama set because I am not reading the letter from a mama set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, I'm going to be tripping on my words uh, all over the place on this one. And uh, 
basically, Mama Sets has sent us in a song, which is a parody of Baby Got Bat by Sir mix a -Lot. This one is Baby Got Bear by, Her by Sir Hits-A-Lot. <laughs> now, this song is supposed to be read... Uh, wrapped fast, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to read it that fast and say it that fast. So I'll I'll just say the words as best as I can, and here we go. I like bare butts, and I cannot lie. You other classes cannot deny. Then when a bear uh, that when a bear walks in with an itty bitty brain and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Want to pull out your spear? Because you notice that bear ain't sheared. It's sheer or sheared. Because <laughs> you notice that butt ain't sheer. Because it's covered Cause with you her fur. That butt and I'm ain't hooked sheared. and it's all just a blur. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mama Seth. That's, um, yeah, we, we got to discussing um, bear's bottoms two weeks ago, too. Ah. We kind of wandered all over the place, and there was anatomical discussions and website discussions. And speaking of websites, <laughs> we should put your website to work while you play your Bjorning and, you know, look at the burr end of your bear. Um, so if you... Bearbutts.com. Yeah, yeah, if you'd like to start a blogging network <laughs> or whatever you would like to do... <laughs> Yeah, no, we we looked at that one already. Um, no, we're not going there. Seriously, <laughs> somebody did last week. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not going there. But if you would like to get that domain, don't share it with me. But you can use coupon code MMO one four nine, and you can own that for a dollar forty nine, as long as it's not already taken. But I bet it is. <laughs> And and then if you're it, looking for a new PC, then check out doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO Reporter to double your RAM. Yeah, my husband needs a new computer. I am looking really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. getting into games. So his old computer, I keep asking him, do you want a new computer? And he keeps telling me no. Then his brother, then we got him spin tires on the Steam sale. And oh. he did it. That's that's an interesting game. That's a tough game. So he got spin sires on the steam sale, and he was confused. Mm -hmm. And he was he's talking to his brother, and his brother's like, "Well, we'll get you vent, and we'll put you." In. And so suddenly he's playing with people, games with people. Um, wow. Yeah, that he wouldn't do with me. <laughs> so, so we'll get him on an MMO yet. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get. There. <laughs> so we got games with people, but the computer won't handle it very well. So mm -hmm. he's like, he's going very slow. So like, we need to upgrade your computer. Okay. And then Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming out later this year for PC. And his brother wants to play that. With oh, him. yeah. So we have to get, yeah, we've got to get that upgraded. So what I really would like to do is get a new doghouse system, which is not happening. But this is my dream. And then give him my old one. <laughs> I see. The bad, bad Gary Mac. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> totally won't happen, but that would be nice. I love Gary my dog cast. I, I do. It's 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 working wonderfully, and will do exactly more than he will ever need it to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. <clears throat> yep. So um, you can also go to audibletrial.com slash MMO reporter and get a month free for your credit. You can get all kinds of cool books to listen to on your commute. <coughs> Excuse me. Or while you are grinding at your rep, which um, Golden Star clearly does not like. She was tweeting about that. She was trying to raise some of her stuff on her berg and discovered that her deeds and discovered that she really didn't like killing things 557,000 times. That's what Leonor does. Yeah, I know. Hey, look. Here come people. <laughs> there go people. Oh, There go people. Yeah. I wonder if they know they're on the internet. Probably not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Did you, did, you get, um, did you get the proper, you know, um, disclosure form signed by the um, avatars of the people? 
Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, and of course, we have our Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash MMO reporter. We love our patrons. They help us pay for things like servers and, you know, hopefully new equipment and help send us to things like PAX where we get to like, um, we have a team that just got back from PAX South. I haven't really heard how it went yet, but I bet they had a blast and they were very tired. Yep. They were very, very tired. Um, th- it wasn't um it it didn't seem like it was like a big huge announcement for a lot of games i think there was something for guild wars 2 but other than that uh, a lot of game companies just came in and just kind of showed some of the things that they have been showing before so it was kind of a smaller convention yeah well it's their first year i think they're going to be growing <clears throat> um and right, I, right. And, I did... and, and the group that was over there that uh we you know the the group that got to go mm-hmm. you know from MMO reporter uh they got to practice a little bit and hopefully get to some bigger paxes yeah that would be fun um yeah so we're going to be getting some videos out of that soon yeah ben ben from um defiance reporter said there wasn't a lot of um, MMO news but i noticed that at pax prime too we were, mm-hmm. we were we were stretching to multiplayer games <laughs> because <laughs> there wasn't a lot of MMO news. Quite frankly. there seems to be, uh, especially for this year, there seems to be a lot of games that have MMO MMO elements to them and role playing elements to them, but not necessarily big triple A. MMOs coming out this year. Yeah, yeah, I have noticed that. Um, and I was, that's what the guys mentioned. I, I just got done listening to the best of MMO Reporter and their MMO Reporter um, uh, prediction show. And that's what Bill, mm-hmm. you know, and you guys had kind of noticed that nothing in 2015 really is announced. Mm-hmm. So, so right. yep, yeah, it's going to be an interesting year. Yeah, it, it should be a very interesting year. Interesting to see how MMOs morph. Um, I actually have been playing a beta of a, it's a flash game. It's kind of an MMO thing. You build a community. I don't know if if I'm going to be battling people or not, but I'm playing this flash game and it's like, you know, it's one of those that you like set stuff to go and then it finishes Mm -hmm. and then you have to, you know, pick it up. So it's like timed. And of course you can pay money to get things to go faster and all this stuff. Right. I'm like, I want to play this on my phone or my tablet because I could do this at work. I can't load, load this flash game on my work computer. They won't let me. You know, this is like, why is, why are you building this on the computer? Why not make mm-hmm. this a, an Android or an Apple iOS game? Because that would be perfect for it. Because <laughs> <coughs> it's just click and choose. I mean, there's not a lot to it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, there there are um, um, there aren't that really many Western games that are focusing on tablets, you know, like the multiplayer server type games. But a lot of Asian games are going that way. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of Asian, um, especially MMO stuff. I mean, they're coming out with MMO, MMO stuff like all the time. Yeah. So it's it, it it'd be interesting. It will be interesting to see. Um, if you would like to send us letters like Amama said and Kevin did, you can email us at lotor.reporter at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Lotor Reporter. You can check us out on Facebook. Just search for Lotor Reporter. Of course, you can leave a voicemail at 616-666-6778 or use the widget on the right-hand side of the screen when you visit the site, excuse me, which is lotorreporter.com. If you have a cool, sexy European or um, Australian or New Zealand accent, it would make me even happier if you left me a voicemail. Um... <clears throat> Just say, Oi. Yeah. Oi, I like the show. <laughs> that that would make, that would make me very happy. Um, and then they would know it was for me and not for um, Steve. Uh, <laughs> you can also check us out on youtube.com slash user slash MMO Reporter Network. That will be where the Pack South videos will be uploaded at. That's where um, we're uploading some cool stuff, plus one keyboard, some first reports, things like that. The shows are being uploaded. So this week, Lanar was playing in the moors while we were recording. So you can see the video of him dying many times, which I think is normal oh. in the moors. I died like... Three times. Okay, every time I flipped over, you were dead. So, oh. You flipped over three times. Yeah, I see you have your horsies up. Yep, I had my whole Rohirrim. 
<laughs> That's a lot of Orzies. I'm over 100 now. Wow. Um, you can also check us out at twitch.tv slash MMO Reporter. Be sure to subscribe to us at both YouTube and MMO Reporter on Twitch so you know when we go live and when we put new stuff up. You can reach me on Twitter at the Carrie Mac. It's T-H-E-C-R-I-M-A-C. How can they follow you, Leonor? They can follow me at Leonor, L-A-Y-A-N-O-R. And also, because I live-streamed the game Hello Kitty Online you, this week. You really did that? I just cannot. <laughs> I was shocked because, it was still up and running. Because when I signed up, they automatically gave me an email address called Leonor at HelloKitty.com. So I guess you can get a hold of me that way oh, as well. Oh, really? That is awesome. <laughs> That is absolutely awesome. Yes, <laughs> email everyone at Leonor at HelloKitty.com. Now, I'm going to tell everybody right now, I don't know how the hell to check it. <laughs> but uh, you can you can write me all you want. <laughs> <clears throat> Techno, Techno Count would like to know if you have every horse. Uh, I do not have every horse. Um, I, I'm missing quite a few of the... The Lotro store horses. I'm missing, um, like the ones that came out when Rohan came out, the, some of the special ones that came out randomly, and I'm missing two class horses, which are the captain and the warden horses. I'm um, shocked you don't have the warden horse, Lanar. The warden horse looks very plain. Ah. That's why. Okay. It was, it was like the last one, the second, the last one or last one to come out. And I was like, man. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't believe, I, st I still don't believe I own the minstrel horse because it was just too um, circus tender. The minstrel horse is awesome. The minstrel horse is awful. It looks like a minstrel horse. It looks like a circus tent. Minstrels look like clowns. You ever see, um, uh, what, oh, um, um, uh, King Arthur and, uh, Holy Grail. That's a jester, not a minstrel. Different thing entirely. They they say right in there they ate Robin's minstrels. I know, but it was. A... <laughs> <laughs> I will have um, to rewatch the horses that I'm missing. There there are a couple you, of horses you... that I'm missing from uh, maybe one or two festivals, but I've been keeping up on those and getting all of the festival horses, including like the super duper rare ones. Because if I miss a rare one, like the the skeleton seed mm -hmm. and I missed it the first year it came out I would get it from the turbine store the following year at the end of the, the event the second time Okay. do you have the meta horses yes Okay. do you have the Isengard horses I have horse? the meta horses I think I'm missing two oh. meta horses one from Mirkwood I need to finish a deed over there in the dungeons and I never find people to uh, grind out the dungeon okay. in the instance over there because it's complicated. And there is a, another uh, Erebor. I, I don't have the whatever the, all those instances that came out for Erebor, the, the really short instances where you fight two trolls and that's it. Okay. Or you fight the, the big smog fake dragon that a bunch of people have stuck together with duct tape. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you get a horse out of that. I'm missing the horse out of that. Um, and I take it you're see. missing the um, the sparkly Isengard horse too. The the horse of many no, colors. I have that. You have the horse of I many have colors. That. Okay. Yes. That was a lot yes. Of that good. one's actually pretty easy to get right now. Okay. Uh, a lot easier than it used to be. Okay. There was something that um, there was a couple I just thought of, but now I can't remember them. So um, I'm close to getting a lot of them. All of them. I even went uh, when when Lotro went to PAX and stuff like that, and I wasn't a part of the MMO reporter team. I was actually buying the PAX codes off of eBay to get the extra horses. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, I was that dedicated. Wow. <laughs> and Mama said you don't have the Hello. Mama set says you do not have the Hello Kitty horse. I think that would be the minstrel horse. But hey, that's just me. A funny thing is when when I moved to, over to um, Washington about four years ago, I had to start up a new bank account, okay. and and the bank account they would give you, you, you get to pick your ATM picture, uh -huh. 
And I was really, really close to getting the Hello Kitty card because it was big and bright and pink and had Hello Kitty on it. And I just want to whip it out and show Hello Kitty. I'm like, look at my card. But then I started thinking, you know, that would be the stupidest thing for me to do is whip out my debit card and flash it around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, I'm thinking, yeah. All righty. Well, uh, welcome back. I'm so glad you're back. You're not leaving me for I, a while, right? I am missing, missing, missing the show. Holy cow. Okay. Well, we I couldn't you. even listen to it. Oh. Yeah. I got the show up for one show, and then that was it. I was like, man, I hope they ain't screwing something up. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then Chris died. Chris, Chris died. We, we killed Chris, and then, and then he caught the crud or the flu or the um, Ebola's or something, and he's not recovered yet. Um, right? Yeah. I, so I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, you missed the sexy voice episode. No, you were there for the, my sexy voice episode, the one that I could hardly talk. And then I yep. was home for a whole other week after that. <laughs> <laughs> that is dedication. All right. Well, we will talk to our dedicated listeners next week. Um, thank you so much for listening and downloading. And as always, we do hope to see you in game. How's it going? It's going okay. Welcome back. <laughs> you get to do the Baby Got Bear song by his mama said, because I sure as heck ain't going to do it. What? He wrote l- lyrics <laughs> for Baby Got Back. Oh, no. Well, it was Chris's fault. <laughs> <laughs> that one a bear walks up and... <clears throat> in a... In... <laughs> That when a bear walks up in with an itty bear walks in with an itty bitty brain and a round thing in your face, <laughs> you get sprung. <laughs> pull out your spear. I'll pull out your spear because you notice that butt ain't sheer. This is gonna be hard. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> and I'm hooked and it's just a blur. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at MMOReporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at Patreon.com slash MMOReporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.